What's in your hand? Who's in your heart? Jesus? Do you believe in the blood? Yeah. You believe in the power of the cross? Yeah. You believe the Holy Spirit is in you? Yeah. Do you believe the Bible that said that we have Ephesians 6, that we have the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, and, and the belt of truth, and our feet shuttered with the gospel of peace, and we also have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Do you believe you have that? Yeah. Then what are you doing looking at your bears? Draw the sword and slice the thing. Hack it away. Go for the kill. <laughs> I just want to look at it. The more you look at your problem, it will grow on you. Yes or no? We have the same Jesus. We have the same Trinity. We have the same Holy Spirit. We have the same nine gifts. We have the same fruits. What the Lord in you is the same Lord in me. It's that the only difference is if there is any difference. Yes, you don't know what you got. Hit the person next to you. Do you know what you got? Is there anyone here with me today? Yeah. Some of us here, you should have already migrated from the lion and bear problems to giants. Giant speaks of the issues that is coming against your city, your nation. But we are so busy describing and making drawings about our lions. My lion is fat. My lion's colorful. My lion's got two horns. My lion's got big ears. You're so good at describing your problem. I sit down and say, what's going on? Oh, yeah. Do you have five hours? Yeah. And then you start describing your lion. And you're so good at describing it. I went, oh my goodness. You know the details. You never miss the details. And God is saying, do you need to describe it or kill it? He hit me. She didn't cook for me. He didn't take the bins and the rubbish out. She didn't turn on the hot bath for me. The kids would never change their nappies are still the same. He didn't send me those text messages that make me feel like I want you. You know what people do. You know, I never get that. You're so good at describing your problems. And yet, you're not so good at knowing how to get rid of it. Do you, do you still want to be a Christian? Is there a warrior in the house? Do we have dominion? Do we have dominion? We have dominion. Say, I have. I have. Come on, say it out loud like you believe. Say, I have, I have. dominion. dominion. <laughs> you go home and you look at all the, all the drawings that you have of all your problems. Put them all on the table and say, ah, 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 ah. That's how you treat your bears and your lions. You don't make pictures of them. You don't put paint... That, uh, do a write-up, a novel about them on Facebook, send all your friends, look at my bears, look at my lions. Who wants to read about your bears and your lions? Some people write books about them. Who wants to read about your soap stories? Well, as you do write about problem, make sure there's a solution. But some people, it's all about problem. I'm so, I'm so dumb. Woe is me. No hope. Nobody cares. Nobody loves me. And Jesus said, Hey, wake up! Hey, cursing yourself to death. We have dominion. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. And we have what? Dominion. Say this with me. I have dominion. They came back. This is what they said. And that's in um, uh, Luke 10. You can read the whole thing. They came back and they said, Jesus, guess what? He said, yeah. Demons submit to us in your name. That is fantastic. That's fascinating. I, we've never seen demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus said, oh, this is so awesome. He looked up to heaven and he said, thank God. Father, I thank you that you not reveal these things to the prudence and the educated, but you reveal to the babes. And he turned around and said, don't marvel that demons submit to you in, in, in my name, but marvel ye that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know what Jesus is saying? Authority for demons that bow to you in my name, it should be bread and butter. Nothing to be fascinated about. That's your bread and butter. And he said, I've given you power and authority over scorpions and snakes. 
All the works of the devil will not overcome you. You will overcome all the works of the devil. Jesus said that to his followers and he's still saying the same thing today to his followers in this room. I have given you authority and power over snakes and scorpions and none of the works of the enemy shall harm you. Believe that, get that and live that and put your foot down and say, hey, submit to me in the name of who? Jesus. Kill your bears and kill your lions and let them submit to you in the name of Jesus. And if you can do that on a regular, consistent basis, God said you're qualified to deal with giants over cities and nations. That's why I go out and deal with giants over cities and nations and I come back here to our church who should be a military force and I see people still sitting in their diapers that has not changed for months. I can't wait for Pastor David and Tina to come back. I need to overcome. You are already an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. Just rise up and exercise what you have. You're happy? Say this with me. I am a conqueror. I am an overcomer. Did you know that if you say that so often that you believe it, you become it because you are what you say and think. No one here has problems. I know you, but no, no, don't say that. I'm going to say it to your face. You don't have a problem. You know your problem is you don't know what you have to do with your problems. You don't have a problem. You don't. You just don't understand the weapons and the resources that is available at your disposal to deal with them. And yet you have, you have access to them. Use them. We should be solving the problems of our community, but we are still stuck here dealing with others' issues. Not that it's a bad thing, and that's why I feel God is saying, educate your people. The future is great, but they need to walk out this life with knowledge and understanding. Now what's this? Give them dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth and over, over the earth, we have dominion over everything, everything. You have authority over every animal, creature, anything on the earth. You have authority and dominion. Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because you are made in his image. You're endowed with dominion and authority. And God is saying, hey, guess what? You have authority over everything on the earth. Why don't you use that against your personal problems? Why don't you use that global authority, universal, heaven and earth is for you and with you. Why don't you use that against your lions and your bears? And yet you cry all the time. I say, I've given you authority over everything. Now, that's the authority. That's the level. Take some of that and deal with these things. We have it. Every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and God created man in his own image and likeness in the image of God. He created male and female. Verse 28, and this is my last one. And then God blessed them. Ah, I love that. I want to I wanna demonstrate the point. Come here, uh, Gene. Come and stand here. Look at the people. And I need to demonstrate this point. Just look at the people. If you just, yeah. So God created man, male and female. Where's Kylie? Come, Kylie. Come. You stand there together, male, male and female. Hold hands. And God said, and the Bible said, God bless them. You know that blessing simply means he declare an eternal, it's like an eternal proclamation and decree. It wasn't an emotion. God declare an eternal proclamation and decree. And he said, this is what you will be for the rest of your life. Bang, bang. It's a decree. You know when a king says to you, bow, I'm going to put my sword over you and you're going to stand up as a knight. God knighted man and woman in the beginning and said, rise up with authority. It will be on you for the rest of your life. Amen. That's what he has done for us in Christ. Blessed us and said, this is your declaration for the rest of your life. You're going to be like this. Don't doubt it because if you doubt it, it will move away. But if you believe it, you'll have everything that I've spoken over your life. It's not an emotion. It's a proclamation that's a spoken of God's truth upon man and woman. So you two, you can separate now, but live in that blessing, all right?
So here's the blessing. If, if, thank you so much. You, you, can, you can sit down now. Now, I want everybody to receive this before we go home. He blessed men. How did he do that? By speaking this over men and women. Here it is. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. He didn't say, I, I wish one day you'd be free. He said, be. It's done. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. That's your mandate. That's my decree and my declaration. Be that. You will be that. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will replenish the earth. You will subdue. Subdue means to rule and conquer. And put them all under your feet. He said, be. There is no room for negotiation. Be. That's it. Done. Go. Conquer. Rule. Reign. Change the world. Be. If you just have that B-E word bang in your brain, the whole world will come to you. You rule over everything. They don't have to rule over you because you now know your mandate and your decree and proclamation of the king upon his king and queens and princes. Be fruitful. That's it. I'm going to be fruitful. Some say, you're not going to be fruitful. Your church won't be fruitful. Your marriage won't be fruitful. Your business won't. And you turn around and say, no, the Lord said be. It's a done deal. So shut up. Your kids won't be fruitful. You know, that word be, there's no room for negotiation. It's a proclamation of blessing. You can't curse anything God has blessed. Yes or no? Be. I'm going to be fruitful. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to go to the world. I'm going to be a prime minister. I'm going to be a filthy, rich businessman. I'm going to be a church. I'm going to be a fivefold minister. Minister, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be what God said to me. I'm going to be. That's it. It's a done deal. It's not open for negotiation. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth subdued. Have dominion over the fish, sea, birds, and every living thing that moves. Genesis 12, verse 1. And the Lord God said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to the land I will show you. How many of you here know that there is something awesome out there for you? You just know it. You have not seen it, but in your, in your, in, in your bedroom when you're lying, you have this dream, and you know that is something that is going to happen, but you have not seen it yet. Don't lose those dreams. Fix your eyes on those dreams. It's going to happen. God said, get out to a place that you don't know of, but I will show you. So some of us need to just get out of some stuff today, right? Yeah? Just get out of laziness. Get out of procrastination. Get out of wickedness. Get out. Just get out of some stuff today. I don't know what you need to get out of, but just get out of something. Because there is no going in without getting out. You know that. You can never go into anything if you don't get out of something. Don't tell me I'm going to get in there. And I said, are you leaving something? No, no. I'm bringing all of them. No, no, leave them. You got to leave some stuff to get into other stuff. And by the way, new wine is for new wine skin. It's not, you can't bring the old into the new. What's this? And he said, I will make you a great nation. Ha <laughs> ha. I will bless you and make your name great. Did you know that, can I say this? And I, this, is, this is truth. Did you know God wants to show off his kids to the world? Did you know that it's in his heart to show you off? Did you know he wants to show you off? And some of us are shying back from being so openly revealed. And bless openly. You shy away. It's like, oh, I just, I just want to praise the Lord. That's, that's religion. That's false humility. If God is elevating you, that's him showing to the world how awesome you are in him. How awesome he is in you. Don't be afraid to be exposed and for God to show you off. Let the Lord show you off. It's not you trying to show off. It's God showing you off. It's okay for him to show you off. I don't want to be popular. What if he wants you to be popular? 
I don't want to be famous. I don't want my name known. What if he wants you to be known? I just want to remain synonymous, you know? <laughs> you know what? Many people have said that in the Bible. I study the Bible and God take them away from hiding and show them off to the world. The more you try to hide yourself, the more God is looking deliberately to bring you out and say, Wow, look at my man. Wow, look at my woman. Wow, look at my church. So stop hiding. When it's time to be promoted, let the Lord bring you up forward and let God shine his glory through you. Amen. I will make, make your name great. I used to struggle with that. And then the Lord said to me, David, that's from me. I make you great, not you making yourself great. And I accepted it. I said, all right, Lord, David Vaca all over the world. <laughs> I wrote two books now and I put videos and I just blasted. And a lot of people said, man, we Christian, we should be a bit more, you know, behind the scene. I'm like, I'm not going to be behind the scene. We're supposed to be the light and salt of God into our world. We're not supposed to put our lights under our bowl, but put it somewhere where it shines to the whole house. Why are we hiding? Yeah. Yes or no? Let the Lord bring you out and bring you forth and show you off. I want God to do the same for our church. How many of you want this church to be known? Not because we want it to be known. What if God is like, I want Breakthrough Church, Springfield to be In fact, we're actually quite known. Some people have come to me and said, man, your church must be a church of 10,000 people. I said, no, it's not even. <laughs> and it's, the, it's just the stuff that we hear. The stuff you do. And we hear, we, hear, we hear stuff that you do in the community and blah, blah, blah. And then we investigate. We found out there's Breakthrough Church, Springfield, Breakthrough Church, Springfield, Breakthrough Church. Some of your members are here and there. Some of you, they're, they're there. Gen X Unleashed. Uh, uh, I, could, I could go through the list. And they're like, your church must be a church of 10,000 people. I said, it's not. Come to church and you'll find out we're just a bunch of monthly crews. Sometimes some of us don't even know left from right. But we just love, <laughs> we, just, we just love Jesus and we love to come to church and make some noise in the house of the Lord. Come on. Yeah. But I believe God wants to shine this church globally. In fact, we're already out there. But I'm like, well, if that's from you, God, let's go all out. Even Mars will be calling for us to come there. You're too famous on earth. Come to Mars. Why put limitations and restrictions on us? If there are people to be saved on Mars, let's go save them. He said to the land, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. How many of you want God to bless you? How many of you want God to bless you? How many of you want to be in the blessings of God? Well, I've already proclaimed that over you. Stay in it, all right? And don't move away from the blessing. I will bless you and those who bless you. Now, what's this. This is something that many of you went quiet on, and I'm going to make, I, I need to clarify this. I will curse those who curse you. Some of you went, ah, that is not the God I serve. He no curse no people. I struggle with that. And then the Lord said to me, David, that's not you cursing them. That's me. You stay my blessing and you are, you, you, I bless you. You are a blessing. I bless you. You are a blessing. I bless you. You are a blessing. Some people will be so envious and angry and, and, and jealous of you. They're going to start bringing things to curse you. You don't worry about it because I will curse anyone that tried to curse you. I'd rather God curse my enemies than me cursing my enemies. And we can't accept that. It's like, oh, we, you know, God is love. Well, he's sovereign. He, he, he can curse your enemies on your behalf because it's not you cursing them. You're just so busy being blessed and God is a, and you wonder why your people around you that are making insult at you and speaking against you and go Facebook and Snapchat and chat, 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 chat. And they're all going, they're going hard. And then suddenly the marriage is breaking down. The kids are going crazy and you never said anything. And then God said, that's me cursing them for cursing you. We went quiet on that and I went, uh-oh, religious spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Lack of understanding, you know. You're not supposed to curse people. That's not your business. Your business is to be blessed, be a blessing, and let the Lord deal with your enemies. How many of you understand that now? If you understand that, you will not even fight back. Leave room for God's judgment. Just be busy being blessed. They say something like, oh, who cares? Lord. <laughs> and 
And I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to reply. I'm not going to curse them in my prayer. I'm going to bless, 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 bless. I'll leave them to you. And you know what? He is so good at dealing with your enemies. Leave them to God. Amen. And if they come against you, just say, oh, brother, sister, bless you. I'm not going to en en entangle myself in this fight because you know what? I'm just too busy being blessed. I'm so blessed. I want to be a blessing. And by the way, you want some money? I know you hate me, but you want some money? I know you hate me, but do you, want to, do you want to come to my house and swim in my swimming pool? Do you want one of my old cars? I can give it away to you. Why do you have to fight me? Come and be in the blessing with me. But if they insist on fighting you, let God deal with them. Please don't, don't get weird on that part. He curses my enemies. Yeah, it's not you, it's him. Here I close. And in you, say in me. In me. Say in me. in me. And say through me. All the families in Goodna, Red Bank, uh, Augustine Heights, Springfield, Camira, because me and Tina and Camira, we're going to bless Camira. Ipswich, Brisbane, Australia, the Pacific, the world will be blessed through us. Why? That's just the deal. That's just the way it is in God. You come in, He blesses you, and He wants you to be a blessing to everybody around you. How many of you know that you, you are a conqueror and an overcomer? How many of you know that you don't have a problem? It's only because you think you do. But even if you do, you can deal with them with what you have and what you know. Yeah? Yeah? Yes or no? We're all We're awesome. Awesome. We are so awesome in God's, in God's presence, in God. Now. Of your Father, your love never fails. We see 